And then, boom! Ladies and gentlemen, Jesse and vampires everywhere in the yeah, building! Hell yeah! Woo! <laughs> hell yeah! It is your boy. Good sir, how are you today? I'm doing alright, can you hear me alright? Uh, you sound great, you look great. Uh, for those that may oh, not know who you. you are, Jesse, could you please properly introduce yourself, let us know whereabouts in the world you are right now, and plug or promote anything you'd like. What's up, everybody? I am the current drummer for Vampires Everywhere, and I right now am in Lancaster, Pennsylvania. I am the only East Coast boy. Uh, the rest of the band is in Las Vegas, Nevada. Is that where they reside full time normally? So you. Yep. So how does that work for, like, practicing? Do they just send you the tracks and then you just practice in your own spot and you're ready to do like a two or three day practice with them before the runs? That's exactly what happens. So like this has been like a completely different, a completely different thing that I'm used to. So like, I, I really like got thrown in the wolves uh, when I joined Vampires Everywhere. So it's literally, I got uh, like 12 songs, like a full headliner set was like, learn these songs. I was like, I'll learn these songs. And then like a week before meeting up with the guys for the first show it he's uh i got sent all the click tracks so like i was playing to the mp3s like on spotify i just made a playlist of like the order i okay. just played along and then it was and then i had to like relearn how to not listen to the recorded drums and then when i fly over there and uh i get like two or three days of like five or six hours with the guys and they're like, all right, well we know it now. So basically for anyone who isn't in like a complete touring band, it's you practice on your own and you rehearse with the band. And you only had probably what a handful of rehearsals until it's go time. So now we're pretty seasoned. Like I've been with the band since the rebirth. So vampires everywhere has been a band since like 2000, like nine or 10, like, I'm 25 now, and I was like 13 when Vampires Everywhere came out. So there was like a six-year hiatus, and in 2021, they came back. So I've been the drummer since they've come back, and uh, yeah. Yeah, so there's, there's – I'm like one of – I'm now I'm pretty seasoned. So when I go back to do like a rehearsal for – our October run, we're literally going to have one rehearsal and that's it. So yeah. if I fuck up and don't know anything, then it, that's on me. <laughs> For sure. When they, when they're recording new music, do you have input on the drum sections or are they kind of like meeting it out and then they send it back and forth to you and you're like, Oh, I would do a fill here. I would do this there. How does that work as far as like creating new music? Uh, so as of right now, to be completely honest with you, uh, as of recently, I've gotten a little bit of input. So it's 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 like that. So uh Michael is the singer, Michael Vampire. Uh he's been he is the only original member left. And like for all intents and purposes, he is vampires everywhere. Gotcha. Uh he is the goat. He's awesome. And uh when I first started, you know, members kind of in the past for him have kind of been like a revolving door. Right? So now that I've been with him and consistently stayed with him uh, for at least a little bit of a year, he'll send me like the track and be like, hey, so like, what? how does this sound? Would you want to change anything? Like, how would you do it? That's cool. And then I would I would have notes and then and then. Yeah. So I've had a little bit of input as of recent. What you blazing on today? Uh, so I have a cart. Don't ask me if it's Indica or Sativa. I have no idea. It's. It gets me high. Heard. I got you. Smoke weed every day. <laughs> I'm going to rip this bong right here while we jam. Uh, let's jam Tear Me Down, which I believe is the newest single, correct? Yes, sir. Newest what? single. And then, I, and then I got some stuff to say after that. You could go first. We got plenty of time. There's a... We're going to have a new single coming out in less than a month. And the only... I He has announced it on stage, but I'm not going to be the one to like announce it to a bunch of people. It is a revamped 
version of an old song. So if you're a Vampires Everywhere fan from back in the day, uh, like Kiss the Sun Goodbye era, we have revamped one of those songs. And I literally fly to L.A. to do a music video shoot next week. And it's it's when I listen to it, it gives me goosebumps. So uh, wait excellent. 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 I'm so excited. It's going to be awesome. So I got to turn me down. Let's puff on something real quick and then we'll get back to the questions. How did uh, how did Michael find you? Oh, so a uh, a mutual friend hit me up and was like, "Yo, uh, Vampires Everywhere is coming back. They need a drummer for a music video, a festival appearance, and maybe a tour. Would you be interested?" And uh, I I just joined another band at like that point. Like I'm a year in. Can we but name? Like, can you name drop the other band? Oh yeah, it was called Misery. Mi okay. uh, it was called Misery Loves Company, but and then it got rebranded to Misery with an exclamation point. Uh, we were signed to Revival re uh, Recordings, so I'm like a year into that, and uh, I get a message going, "Hey, yeah, I'm gonna send him like your drum videos that's on YouTube." I was like, "Yeah," so I get a call from Michael, like. Two days later, and he's like, yeah, come out. Uh, so I did the music video shoot with them for the song called uh, Witch, which is hilarious looking back on it because at the time I wasn't in the band. I was just a body. <laughs> and uh, I am in it for 0.3 seconds. You're just like, that's Yeah, it. <laughs> you see there's a drummer, but you never see my face. You see my face one time. And uh, it was clever like camera Sponge, angles. It was like it was like it was like SpongeBob in that like Krusty Krab commercial. It's like there I am, Gary. <laughs> like, that was me. I was me to all my friends. And then uh, I did that festival appearance, and I actually almost turned it down uh, because he wanted me to do a tour in October, and I would have, and I had something like going on the the first and second day of that tour. And it was something for my girlfriend, and I and I put my foot down. I was like, "This isn't really my band yet. Like, I'm not in this." So, she doesn't get a lot of those. Like, when I start touring, I'm gonna miss holidays, birthdays, and stuff like that. So, I told him, "I was like, hey man, look, I would need to miss the first two days of tour. I understand it's all or nothing. Like, I'm not offended." Uh, when I rehearsed for the festival appearance, because I still did that. He was like, I'll find a replacement. I'll find a fill-in for the first day. The second day randomly got canceled. He goes, but you need to fly in for the third day for the rest of the tour. And I said, done. And uh, I've been with them ever since. Give me a hell yeah. Give me a hell yeah. Yo, it looks like you got some like medieval badass weapons or something behind you. What, what you got going on behind you? Oh, yeah. So we have, let's see if you can see this. It's like a big spear thing. Uh, I had more, but I have a brand new kitten, and he was batting at it. We had like a, uh, you know, those like whips, the like the nine tail whips. Okay. Uh, you know the one that you know beat Jesus Christ. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I had one of those. Uh, we had like, like battle axes and shit. Yeah, it's all over the walls. I have three knight helmets over there. Uh, it was my girlfriend's dad's, and he was like, "You guys can keep them for decor," and I was like. Fuck yeah, those yeah, are bad. Hell yeah. Who has night helmets in their house? Me. That is cool. That is cool. I know we talked about possibly doing some trivia, and hopefully you brought the hot sauce along. Okay, so I have Texas Pete's. That's cool. Oh, you, can't, you can't see it. I have Texas. Yeah, I don't do well with hot, and uh, I'm just getting over the worst indigestion of my life. Cause I got a little too drunk at Blue Ridge Rock Festival and didn't eat for like 24 hours, and oh my god, it messed my stomach up. But I have hot sauce, so this is for you. Party, I appreciate it. Did you were you able to catch uh, a Skylar Drive set? Uh, so no, because I was I was doing something, but I did hang out with them after, like after all our sets, we were all hanging out, and I got to meet them for the first time. And it's really funny that you had Jordan because I was like, I was just with Jordan smoking weed backstage. Like, I was just with him. I was just with Brian. 
Uh, all of those Skylet Drive guys are such sweethearts. I'm so happy that they're back doing their thing. For real, we've we've had a Skylet Drive on probably probably ten times. That was like Jordan's fifth or sixth appearance. But I have I have 15 other hot sauces right here. Pick a number one through 15. Just randomly call it a number one through 15. Six. Six. You have chosen literally the f***ing worst one. God damn. It. Yeah, that's that. Yeah. This is a, a yeah. homemade sauce. Uh, it has, Lizzie, what does it have in it? It's from our buddies in, uh, in Sky Drifter. We, we hung out with them in August, but um, I need to know some, some stuff about you to do the trivia. What is either the TV show or movie you have seen the most? It doesn't have to be your favorite, just the one you've seen the most, one or the other. You get to pick the movie or TV show. I'm gonna look up trivia on that. If I stump you, you take the hot sauce. If I, if, uh, if I cannot stump you, I do the hot sauce, but I'll probably do both either way. If you need a second, if you need a second to yeah, think about it, yeah, what yeah, song would me... you like us to play second from Vampires Everywhere? Ooh, okay. So this is all right. Go to go to Hellbound and Heartless. Uh, yeah, it's it's one of them all where they all look like Marilyn Manson people. Uh, go to Starve 666. This is what we open our set with, and it literally is one of my favorite songs ever. Okay, cool. I'm going to jam it, and then we'll come back, and you let me know what you're thinking. The movie you've seen the most or TV show you've seen the most? Anything. anything. Terminator, Harry Potter, South Park, Simpsons, S Sopranos, doesn't matter. What you thinking? The Office. Okay, so you've seen every episode of The Office at least twice, probably. Yes, I'm still not good with trivia, but yeah, The Office. Okay. That was that was like my background guilty pleasure. I got plenty of, of Office trivia. Let me look up something. All right, we've asked this one before. We've asked this one before, but it seems like no one's ever gotten it in, in the history of the three times I think I've asked this question. But on The Office, there is an episode. <laughs> there is an episode where a fire occurs. Who actually started the fire and how? Dwight Schrute. He threw a cigarette in the uh, trash can. Incorrect. Gotcha, bitch. Mm. Who started the fire? Ryan leaves food in the toaster oven starting the fire and everyone has guessed exactly what you guessed, but it's revealed later on that Ryan actually leaves food in the toaster oven which starts the fire. So, sir, oh. let's both do some hot sauce together. We're partying. We're having fun. Uh, I even bought a <laughs> shot glass, so let's do this. You don't have to do that much. I'm just going to pour like a big old... This this has this batch has 36 Reapers, and I won't be able to continue if I do a shot glass worth. So I'm going to oh, do... Oh, I'm not doing a shot glass worth. I'm just... It just looks cooler. Okay. Well, I'm going to put a whole bunch a, on right here. I'm a professional. And it's so thick, it just sticks right there. And uh, bottoms up, I guess is how we say it. And uh, let's see, let's let's. Uh, as soon as we're done with this, I want you to tell me the three best video games ever made. As soon as we do this. Oh, got that. Salute. Cheers. <laughs> Whoo! <laughs> three best video games Fine. ever made. Uh, Halo. Left for Dead. And I'm I'm just gonna Madden. There there's a reason. There's a reason. There's a bunch of them. Are you a big football fan? Uh, I was for a long, long time. I I don't follow much of it now, uh, because I have other shit. But yeah, I'm a I'm a huge Pittsburgh Steelers fan. Fair enough. I'm a big Vikings fan. We could definitely hopefully meet in the Super Bowl sometime. That'd be nice. Oh, uh, that'd be sick. My boys are 0 and 4 lifetime in the Super Bowl. We've never won one, unfortunately, but we'll get there. Yeah. We have a six pack. <laughs> I know. The most Super Bowl wins. You guys got a big old bunch of rings. Um, then, but Patriots are second with five, right? Yeah. But Maybe Packers anymore, also five. So that that that's ended. It's true. It's true. Um, what? If uh, not to say that Vampires Everywhere is not your favorite style of music, because maybe it is. I'm not sure. But if you were to be offered a side project of your choice and it didn't conflict with Vampires, so you could totally do it. What kind of genre would you like to mess around with? Okay, so, ooh, okay. So I have two. Can I answer two? Sure. Is that allowed? 
I can do whatever I want. You can do whatever uh, you want. So, all right. I'm going to give three because... Now we're getting out of control. Time. All right. So anything that sounds like the band Dayseeker. Okay. Uh, if a band sounds like Dayseeker or like the new Bad Omens, I'm in it. That's been my guilty pleasure. Uh, anything beat down. So I'm a huge like... Yeah, so like... Like New York hardcore? Uh, so... Okay. Less, like, hardcore-y and more like, uh... Do you know the band Pale Face? Yeah, for sure. If, yeah. If Pale Face called me and, like, Vampires wasn't a thing, like, if Vampires was, like, home from tour and Pale Face called me, I would immediately go. Hell yeah. Chad is, uh, Chad is it, saying Patriots have six rings, by the way. <laughs> They're correcting you. You guys are tied. We're still better. <laughs> For sure. <laughs> uh, I, I didn't know they had six rings. I, I still thought they had five with Dallas. Uh, and then, honest to God, I would love to be in a, like, pop band. Like, uh, so I'm a huge uh, The Midnight, which is more like synthwave. Okay. But bands like the band Camino or Nightly, uh, there's this... Uh, I actually just toured with uh, Alisana, yeah, and their bassist and drummer are in a band called The Ivory, and they're fucking sick. So anything that's like that, I would love to do that. That's so different than like the goth metalcore. So like, I would love to try my hand at that. What's a what's a genre that this pays the most, but you're least excited, but you're still gonna take the gig because it's so much money you cannot say no. But damn it, you're just miserable the whole time while you're playing it. If I had to drum for ACDC. Really? I it's the same beat over and over and over again. And like I would just anything that has a consistent beat for 90% of the song, I would just kill myself. That or if I had to like drum for like Billy Eilish. Fair enough. <laughs> where where have you not toured that is you, you have circled on your on your giant globe that you can spin around in a circle that you really want to play this country? Australia, without Aust a doubt, it's Australia. Hell yeah! Aust there's something there's something in the water that's over there that every metalcore band that's out there is just great. For All real, it's it's so every true. Yeah, that's actually Not my number one place that I would like to just visit over any other country. I would like to go to Australia first if I could just pick. Japan, so probably I, second. That was my second one. Japan? Japan. Yeah. yeah. For some reason, I've always heard that uh, we've had bands on the show and they say, dude, when we play Japan, like they just go three times as crazy as any other audience. They know every single English word and lyric. Like it's, it's just awesome. That's what I've always heard. So I've heard that from everybody from like locally regionally touring bands that have just randomly gone over there uh to like huge bands all of them across the board have said that they are the wildest crowds ever and they're the most accepting hell yeah that's awesome uh let's see uh, is there is there a particular person that you would love to do like a one or two off collab? Maybe not a tour where you're committed to that project, but just something you just like to dabble with this artist uh, to do some form of. Even it could be like as simple as a TikTok video, but somebody that's like a bigger name that you'd like to do some some form of work with. That's pretty. That's pretty broad. Um. Ooh, damn. Uh, uh, so my favorite drummer ever, the reason that I play drums the way I play drums. So I would love to do like a drum shred session with, uh, the drummer, Adam Gray from Texas in July. Okay. He's amazing. And then I would love to do a song that involves Rory Rodriguez of Dayseeker. Hell yeah. I was actually talking sh about Rory yesterday, but I edited it that I edited out that part uh, on the uh, interview that made it on YouTube with Jordan, but uh, we won't get to that. But uh, yeah, Rory Rory's cool, and uh, is 
did did the homie from Texas in July move to Era? Because I know a couple members of Texas in July went to Era. No. So uh, JT, the vocalist, went to Era. Uh, the guitarist Chris went to the the Ghost Inside. Okay. And Adam was drum teching for Matt Griner, and now he's the drum tech for Andrew from the ghost inside, but Texas in July have just started playing one-offs again after like five or six years, something like that. Mm -hmm. And, uh, I saw their first show back and I being a touring musician. Now it's jaded me. Like, I just don't like going to metal shows anymore. Like what, that's my job. What do you, what do you pick apart when you're, when you're watching from an audience perspective? Like, what do we, can you elaborate? Uh, so I just feel like I'm back at my job or I feel like, you know, how do I put this? If, if you play football and you're not in the NFL and then you go see an NFL game, all you want to do is be on the field. You're just okay. like, Oh my God, I, I want to do that. So like when I'm home, I kind of miss the road because like I want to be on stage again because I'm home and I miss it. Um, or I've just heard a lot of screaming and I want something different, but I went to see their first show back and I damn near cried. They were one of the tightest bands I've ever seen in my life after six years of not playing together. Hell yeah. I've never seen Texas in July live, but that would be cool. Oh, you're missing. You're missing out. They're I know so I am. Let's see. Let's do a, let's do a really important question real quick. An important one. Psych in the office. In Michael's birthday, the episode, what item does Pam make fun of Jim for getting at the grocery store? For some reason, Pam thinks it's weird that Jim uses this item. She even voices her opinion over the store's intercom in the episode. Oh my God. Oh my God. I remember that. And she got edged. Oh, Jesus. I, I could picture her using the intercom. Oh my god, I have I have no idea. I don't know. I gotta take a I gotta take a swig now. That's god. another stump. Gotcha, bitch. Mm. I'm so bad at trivia. The answer is fabric softener. She she cannot believe he for some reason she thinks it's really weird that he uses fabric softener, which is not really that big a deal. I'll do uh, I'll do a hot sauce with you. I'm just gonna randomly grab a different one. Uh, I'm gonna go with uh, cowboy bacon from Argentina. That sounds terrible. It doesn't it's, taste like bacon whatsoever. It's, oh, okay, then it's good now. It's really thin. It's not a thick sauce, but it like it stings a little bit. It stings. Um, All right. Well. Cheers. Let me know when you're ready. Cheers. Here we go. Blah. No good. It's no Yo, good at all. Your sound bites are just on point. <laughs> I have um, I have about 180 buttons in front of me at all times. Some of them are You're for like, like a the professional. <laughs> Thank you, I appreciate it. It's it's uh, it was a lot of work to get all the buttons and memorize where they all are to be able to like react within like half a second. Uh, for certain moments and stuff, but what do you do? What do you do in your spare time? Like when you're not doing anything regarding music, just hobbies. Um, do you have any like nerd hobbies, anything like that? So I play Halo, uh, the new one, Halo Infinite. Mm -hmm. Love that. Um, I'm a gym rat, so I go to the gym a lot. And then uh, as of today, I announced it, but tomorrow episode one comes out. I am releasing a podcast called the Senior Citizens Podcast, but senior as in scene kid. Okay, cool. Let's talk about that for a second. Can, what, what's the show about? I mean, obviously, I get the, the, get it, but could you just yeah. explain more? So, okay, so the gist of it is I sit down and talk with a bunch of musician friends of mine that I've either played a show with, that I've either toured with, or just know off of social media and, like, connected somehow. And we talk anything from scene lore. So, like, I'm a huge, uh, like, useless encyclopedia of scene knowledge and like old tours and like old bands that don't exist anymore. Okay. Um, 
So we talk everything from like scene lore to old tour stories to new tour stories. Basically the shit that we talk about after the show it when we're kind of drunk at 2 a.m. near our bus and we all just hang out and talk and, you know, just kind of shoot the shit. It's that. Okay, so cool. You get a li- so you're going to get a little – a little input and taste of how we talk to each other. Where can everyone go to to watch that first episode? Uh, so it's going to be audio only. I'm gonna I'm going to have it up on YouTube, but the main place is do, uh, is going to be Spotify, uh, and it drops tomorrow at noon Eastern Standard Time, episode one. Do they just look up the name of it, or can they look it up through through your name, uh, Jesse? Uh, I'm pretty sure that it's going to be the name of the podcast. If you can't find it because it's going to be new, um, you can always go to my Instagram and I have the link uh, in my bio. And also in my bio is the Instagram page of the Senior Citizens Podcast. Senior is spelled S-C-E-N-E-I-O-R. Gotcha. Hell yeah. Uh, Jesse, we're almost out of time. I appreciate you doing this. My mouth is on fire. Uh, this is actually a for real serious question. I ask every guest we have on the show this final uh, this question. What is a piece of musical advice you can share with us that somebody in the industry has given you that kind of changed things, made you take your career a little more seriously maybe, or an absolutely terrible mistake you made early on in your career that you don't want a starting up drummer or artist to make? Oh, stop it. That was the worst thing I've ever done. Stop so it. I... I uh I stopped playing drums for like three and a half years. Um, Why? I sold my I, so life happened, and I thought at this moment, I turned down a band, for a, normal job that like made more money, and um. I always thought that, you know, it I can always rebuy drums. I can never rebuy time. But when I started drumming again, um, I definitely lost a lot of my skill and a lot of my stamina. And I can only imagine what it would be like if I kept drumming, even for myself. Not, you know, so I tried to change who I was. And when I came back to it, all of this happened within like two years. So for me picking the drums back up, to getting hired with vampires everywhere was two years and i can only imagine how how far along the career i would have been if i never stopped so don't stop i know that's cliche but uh don't (laughs) stop no matter what no that's that's great advice so if you're if you're if you pick up an instrument man just keep playing it keep at it even if you're everyone sucks at first then some of us get a little bit better than others but whether or not you you get a a professional job that's not re- regarding being in a band, keep jamming. Exactly. Hell exactly. yeah. Exactly. I love it. I love it. Jesse, what do you got going on the rest of the day? Uh, so it's it's nine thirty at night. So I'm about to go watch a movie with my girlfriend in bed with my dog and my cat. Excellent. That sounds like a great time. Excellent. Hell yeah. Cheers, yeah. brother. I appreciate you doing this. If it's okay with you, Bro. I'm gonna throw this on YouTube later tonight. Hell yeah, I'll, I'll give it a share. YouTube.com you so slash local band smoke you out. Me. You're awesome, brother. Jesse James Smith of Vampires Everywhere! Yeah, hell yeah. Thank you, dude. Have a great night. I appreciate it. Have a good one.